Hi, this is Kevin with Naples Lawn Service, and today we're going to talk about fencing, how to install some fence uh, on your property. Okay, the first thing you're going to do is put some of these posts in the ground wherever you want to put your garden or, or, or your fence line or whatever it is that you're putting out. You just go down to a hardware store, they make them half this size actually, half this width, and you're just going to beat those into the ground. Uh, wherever wherever you want to have it see I got this one here and I had another one down there and then one over here and one down there you're basically just staking out an area so you have a rough idea where you're gonna have your garden or put your fence up all right so I basically have measured off my other fence over here uh, so I would have a square garden so I measured it to here and put in a stake, measured it to here, put in the stake, and then measured to my other sides. So now I have my area staked out that I'm going to be putting my my fence in. Okay, now you're going to put your post in. So you got three ways to do that. You can use post hole diggers right here. Okay, you can find these at a hardware store for thirty to fifty dollars. This one have the aluminum handles, which are a little bit more sturdy. A little bit more expensive though some come with wooden handles but those can break at some point or you can go buy this uh, you, you can get these augers a tractor supply or rural king or probably online but uh, this little motor with the with the auger was about under three hundred dollars it was like at the time like 240 bucks so the thing about these these are two person operations I would not recommend trying to do this by yourself because if this thing catches a root or a stick on the way down, it's going to rip that out of your arms and throw you to the ground. So this is more of a two person. One person's over here doing the throttle like this. And one person's over there. And you basically you are just going up and down and up and down uh, until you get to the desired depth. And then if you don't have either of those and you have a tractor, you can buy this PHD 100. Uh, these are a couple grand. Um, this is a Roto Mech, and John Deere sells it. And uh, this will hooks right up to your tractor. And with a PTO, you you can drill a hole effortlessly. Now, if you want to see this in action, go to my video. I got a po PHD Post Hole Digger 100 video. Uh, right here on on my channel and you can see this this in action okay so for today we'll just use these manual post hole diggers and uh, we're just gonna pull this pull your marker out of the way and you're gonna start digging right there okay yeah it's a little hard getting through the first bit of sod but once you get through that all sand after that you got to twist that sod out of there now you want to hopefully you set up your post somewhere where there's no roots or by trees or no underground wiring or sprinklers or none of that so before you set your your marker sticks out <clears throat> make sure none of that's down there okay yeah this particular one has actually has a measuring stick on here so you know how how deep that you're going to go okay so I've dug the hole this one we just put down 22 inches but uh usually you want to be at least at least that far in the sand 22 24 for a standard uh six foot pole you just drop it in there you want to make sure it's level both ways okay you want to level it this way you want to level it this way and then when it's level you want to fill it in Okay. I would fill it in a little bit and then check your check your levelness again. You want to constantly be checking your levelness as you fill it in. Okay. Fill it in some more. Because you want these poles nice and straight. You don't want them all, all crooked. Okay, check the levelness. Okay, good. Good, okay. And then finish filling it in. Then I would get a garden hose over here with a straight stream and I would just garden hose around that thing, wash some of that down in there again and keep filling it in and keep checking your levelness. Okay, now we got our second pole that we dug. 
again we dug it about 22 24 inches and we're going to level it up as we go we're going to get a little bit of sand in there level it up keep on going so we're going to get our have our first two poles set okay next thing i'm going to do is put some string between these first two poles because you want to have a straight line because you're going to set more poles in between these two and you want everything accurate it's a lot quicker just to run a string between the two than to keep on measuring off of a fixed point okay so i'm gonna wrap that string around there and you want the string to be on the same side of the post on each post don't put them on the outside of one and the inside of the other okay you're gonna run that string down here around there and tie it up make sure the string's nice and nice and tight okay now usually this is just a small little uh, garden area I'm doing but you could do these 300 feet long but I would set another pole about every every 10 foot okay so I, I wouldn't go more than that so 8 to 10 foot I set a pole 8 to 10 foot set a pole and so on and so forth 8 to 10 foot set set a pole all right so for these in between poles you're just going to Put it there where it's about a quarter inch away from the string you don't want to touch in the string because if you let them all touch the string the string's going to move but you want to go ahead and get about a quarter inch off the string you want to get your level make sure that you're level and then you'll make a mark on the ground down here where your pole's sitting and then you're going to post hole another hole and you're going to just repeat this every eight or ten foot until until your your whole line of post is up now and on the corners you're going to want to build what's called an H. See, I got a post here and I got a post here. And then you want to put a post in the middle of them. Okay, that makes that strong because when you stretch this fence, you're going to need that to be strong. If you don't put this H in here, this post is going to, going to bend. When you get down the other end, you hook your fence on, you pull it tight, this post is going to bend. So you're going to go ahead and put an H on this corner and then you're going to put an H on this corner too okay and the same thing with your opposite corner and your in your other opposite run you're going to put one of these h's on each corner so you'll have a nice solid post so there's a couple different ways to attach these cross beams uh, i've seen people notch these out and then sink it in there on each end you can do that uh, what i do is just drill a hole i just drill a hole straight through with this uh paddle bit and my screw gun here and then I got these big nails at the hardware store and I just hammer that in that way hammer this in this way and it's always always worked for me but that's that's just how how I do it how I build my H's but that H is going to add a lot of strength but you definitely want to do this on your on your corners okay so if you got long runs like you're doing cattle fencing and they're you know hundreds of feet long you're going to want to put in this little 45 degree angle beam here this is going to help with the pressure when you pull on your fence so that's just going to make it one more one more piece of stableness okay you see on all these cattle fences i'm doing 300 foot runs and so these these are going to help you a lot to keep them keep a nice tight corner now these posts i recommend here are four inches three and a half four inches by six foot long okay that's what i would recommend using um, you're going to save a little money if you go smaller but it's not going to be as solid it's just so much nicer these run uh like eight dollars or something uh, we get these down at lowe's but you can get them at tractor supplier rural king but <coughs> three and a half four inches by six foot long that's what we use for our intermediate post now if you want to install a gate i recommend going with these bigger posts these things really are solid they're uh these are usually about eight foot long and about five and a half six inches okay so six inches width eight foot long you got to drill a deeper hole but these holes I usually drill about 30 inches or so but for if you're going to have a, a, a long run of fencing or if you're going to hang a gate then I would I would put in these posts right here uh, this is rock solid these they don't they don't move much and so as you can see we put in this eight foot gate here 
I hung another one on this side, okay, like that. Okay, so the next thing you're going to do is once you get your corner post in and your H's, everything's level, everything's straight, then you're going to go ahead and install your fence. Okay, first thing you're going to do is nail up that fence on one of, one of your corner posts. Get it all nailed up nice and straight, and then you're going to roll it out. Okay, for our staples, I use these inch and three-quarter double barbed. You could use a little bit shorter staples if you wanted, but these are galvanized. These are double barbed, so they won't pull out. And uh, this is what we use for staples. When I'm putting in those staples, I use a little hammer like this. I don't use a regular one. You want something heavy because these pressure treated poles are really tough. Okay, so I'm using a heavy duty hammer. And usually you want to have somebody standing on the other side, put their back against this because it's going to bounce all over the place if you don't. A little better with an H with a cross member, but it's going to take you a while to do all this stapling. But that's how you're going to do it. It's very important that you stretch the fence tight, okay? It's not going to come out good if you don't stretch it tight. It's going to come out real roller coaster, wishy-washy. You don't want that. So what you do is I, I took a piece of rebar and I run it through like every three of these or you could use a rigid piece of pipe or whatever you got a pole but you just thread it through these okay and then hook yourself up a snag strap on the top and bottom of the rebar okay in this case I hooked it up in my tractor but you could use your pickup truck I've used pickup truck before many times and then you just drive forward slowly now not too much because you'll snap this fence it'll pop up up you'll snap it out but Pull the tractor or whatever you've got forward until this fence gets nice and tight, okay? And then when it gets nice and tight, then, you, then you're going to staple it on. I'm going to start at the beginning, and I'm just going to do all, all of these posts. In this case, I'm doing, I'm doing on the ends, I'm, doing, I'm stapling every one, but on the middle post, I'm just going like every other one. But you want to staple that thing up. Start, up, start down there and staple that thing up. And when you get down to here and you're all stapled up, you're just going to go ahead and cut cut this fence off, pop, 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 just like that. And then when you get down to the bottom, it just flies off and that's it. You have a nice tight fence installed. You want to buy one of these fence tools. Okay, these will actually have little cutters right here that are going to cut your fence. And they also have this end in case you got a staple halfway in and it's bent. You put that in the staple. You take a hammer, pop, 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 and you yank that staple out, and you start over, over with a new one. So it's got a little hammer, it's got a little hook on the end, and it's got those cutters. So I've already uh, cut that off uh, here. I went down, cut, 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 but I'll show you how to cut it on a scrap piece of fence. Okay, so here's a leftover piece of fence. But anyway, you just put them things in there and squeeze, boom, and you just cut it just like that. All right, so for fencing in these gardens like I did, um, you use a different type of fence. I'm basically keeping out squirrels and rabbits from eating the garden stuff, and wild hogs will come around. Uh, they can't get in there easily. They can dig under, but it'll take them some time, and hopefully we would spot them. But um, this is uh, called welded wire. We got this at Lowe's, but you can get them at Home Depot or Rural King or Tractor Supply. This is 14 gauge welded wire, and it's got the same size spaces all the way down, just made to keep smaller animals out. There's all sorts of fencing that you can get, but uh, this is a, was a 50 foot roll, 48 inch high. Okay, welded wire, all 14 gauge. Okay, now for these cattle fencing, uh, it gets, it's bigger at the top, and the, the squares get smaller as you go. It's actually called field fencing, and uh, this keeps out smaller critters and stuff at the bottom and basically made for cattle. But this top one is 12 gauge, okay? This is 12 gauge, so it's thicker, okay? The higher the gauge, the thicker the fence. And you've got something like cattle, you want to have something stronger. So this is field fencing, uh, 48 inches. I think it's a 330-foot roll, and... Uh, you can get those again at Rural King or uh, Tractor Supply or places like that. But if you're doing cattle, you, you're probably going to use field fencing. And then you would run a, 
a barbed wire across the top too. All right, if you're doing cattle fencing, put a string of barbed wire, you're gonna staple it right on top of this about an inch off, okay? Just staple it. And by the way, uh, your finished fence should face the neighbor's property. As you can see, it's on this side. That's the neighbor back there. So if you're inside of your property, it doesn't really matter. But if you're on the property line, you're, the finished fence should be facing the neighbors. All right now, when you're doing these gates, you got to realize that they're not exact to the measurement on the, the sticker. This is an eight foot gate. Actually, as you can see, it measures about three inches shorter than eight foot. So before you go setting your post for your gate, set one and then you're gonna lay the gate down on the ground and then see where your second post is going to be drilled so you don't have a big gap in, in your gate all right so what i did is attach that gate to that corner post and then i laid that actually before i attached it i laid the gate on the ground where i just hooked it up like that and now i can see where my other post needs to be so i can go ahead and drill that and i don't have that big big gap in there Okay, so there's two different types of gates. There's one regular and there's one called wire filled. Wire filled means that it has all of this in here. So it'll somewhat match your fencing to keep, keep your critters out. As you can see, it got smaller and smaller as, as it goes so them rabbits can't get through there and eat, eat up your garden. And now I'll show you the other type of gate. And this is the gate that's not wire filled. This is more of a cattle or a horse gate not really meant to keep critters out. These gates will be cheaper than the wire field. The wire field will give you a little bit more money. Okay, so we fenced in this garden. We put a gate on. It's about 20 foot wide and 70 foot long. So it's about 1,400 square foot. And uh, we're gonna do another video on the farming aspect of it. But I uh, just wanted to show you how you put up the fence and you fence it in and uh, the ins and outs and the cost of that. Okay, so for cost on this, you're about $300 in post, you're about 260 in fencing, and then you had staples. And so you're about, uh, and you had the gate, the gate was about 165, 180, something like that. So for the 20 foot by 70 foot fenced in area, you're about $800, and that's if you do it yourself. If you pay labor, that's gonna be a lot more than that. But uh, purpose of doing these videos, show you how to do it yourself. I'm not an expert. I've put up a lot of fence, but I'm sure there's better ways to do it or different ways to do it, I don't know. But this is how we've done it. We've fenced all over the place on, on our property. But uh, purpose is just to try to show you how to do it yourself so you can save some money. If you're gonna have a garden, you probably want to fence it in because you don't want animals coming in there and eating it up on you and then you just wasted all your all your time and money so uh i would definitely recommend fencing in a garden if you're going to have one that's our video for today on fencing and we're going to have a lot more videos coming out so if you want to subscribe hit the subscribe button and uh, hit the like button if you like the video and i'm kevin with maples lawn service